Hamilton has a long, rich history, but some of that city's trees predates its founding by a considerable amount. Justin Chandler is here to tell us about that. He's our Ontario Hubs journalist covering the Hamilton Niagara region. Welcome. Hey, Jan. All right, so you spoke to a landscape architect who is documenting trees in Hamilton. Her project is called Monuments. Walk me through that idea behind the whole project. All right, so Lesha McCricky, she's an artist, she's a landscape architect, and her project, she's attempting to find and catalog all the trees in Hamilton that are older than the founding of the city, so older than 150 years old. So this has involved uh, crowdsourcing, finding the locations of about 1,200 trees, and uh, going and actually measuring them to figure out the age. And there's also going to be an, an arts component with uh, photography, uh, creating a map so that people will actually know where they are. So it's it's a pretty comprehensive project. All right, so I've seen some big trees, but these are some pretty, pretty big trees. Uh, I want to pull up a photo. Here is Lesha in front of one of the oldest trees in Hamilton. Tell us about this burr oak tree. Yeah, so this tree here, uh, 300 years old is the estimate. Uh, so it's a big honker. Uh, Lesha showed me how she measured it and it involved uh, sort of pinning up the tape on the tree and walking all the way around it. It took her a while, much wider than her. Um, and this is considered uh, one of the older trees. Not many trees in the city seem to be older than uh, 300. And this tree is kind of special too because it's got a family nearby. Uh, so there's a couple other bur oak trees um, that are sort of just in a line with it and they're in the 150 to 200 year old range. So if people go to the Huntington Park Recreation Center in Hamilton, um, they'll see these out in the field. Uh, and there's just a, a really interesting pocket of old trees in a space that you might not expect. I want to actually pull up another photo. Uh, this is a very large northern red oak here. And you were just talking about sort of the measurements and how they determine it. Why is the, the, the way that she does it different from what I sort of understand when you sort of determine the age is sort of looking at the rings? of the inside mm. of the tree, correct? Yeah, so the, like the scientific way to 100% to know the age is you take a core sample, you're looking at the rings. Um, she's not doing an invasive measurement, so the way that she does it, she takes the tape measure, wraps that around the tree, and then she uh, figures out the circumference. So she divides uh, the circumference by pi, and then she multiplies this by the growth factor. And the growth factor is different for every tree in different regions. So for example, for the bur oak, it was six. And that gives you the estimate for the tree's age. And if people are curious about that formula, that's in the article on our website. I was gonna say, a lot of math there. All yeah. right, so in your article, you wrote, if trees are older than the city, that also means their context is inherently indigenous. How does that play into your understanding of Hamilton's trees? Yeah, so this was something interesting that Lesha was telling me. Um, she worked with uh, Paul General, who was the former Eco Center Director at Six Nations while she was working on this, and they sort of discussed this idea of monuments. Um, and they were thinking about how a lot of our monuments today, they're to our colonial history. Um, these are coming down. These are things that a lot of people are distancing themselves from now. Um, but trees are sort of this uh, living monument um, that have been around since you know, the time before uh, European contact uh, in the region when some 80% of the land was covered by forest, and now we're down to some 20%. So it's just this idea that, you know, this is a, a monument to our living history um, is really what she was trying to express. Now, we know it's not just planting trees that help the environment, but it's how they are positioned and grouped. I found this very interesting in your article. What did Lesha tell you about that? Yeah, her thinking is that a lot of the time when we think about tree canopy, it's like, okay, we're going to plant a bunch of trees along a boulevard in the middle of the road, or we're going to plant them along the side. Um, her theory is that we should be planting more trees in these pockets where we know that there's really old, successful trees. She's thinking, you know, if we just plant a tree on a boulevard, who's to say the soil's very good? Who's to say it's going to get a lot of water? But if we look and say, oh, well, this this area of land is sustaining several 200-year-old trees, this would actually be a great place to put more. And so her feeling is that we should maybe try and emphasize those areas more in our tree planting uh, rather than some of the other things that we're currently doing. I also found this very interesting. She said that the, the trees talk, correct? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, there's some, some research. Um, I can't say I'm too familiar with it, but about how trees can share nutrients um, and information with one another. And so that when trees are together, they're not so much competing for light, but they're helping one another. So it's sort of this idea that uh, trees are connected and, and actually do well when they're with one another. Very interesting stuff, Justin. Thank you so much. Thank you. The Agenda in the Summer with Nam Kiwanuka is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.